guys, it's Monday and I have just finished lunch and cleaned up the kitchen. Um, I let the boys sit down and watch a little TV show really quickly. They got all of their chores and schoolwork done this morning and they've already had their official hour of tech time today, but I let them watch um, an another little episode of something that they're watching on TV while I am sitting down to work on my meal plan for the week. Um, Last week was a little crazy. I feel like we had a lot of snacky type foods just with the New Year's and all of the stuff that I fixed for that. We had things left over, so we kind of enjoyed that um, the day after. And Dean and I spent a ton of time last week cleaning out our garage where the water leaked and everything was such a mess. If you missed that, you can go back and watch my last video and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, so we ate out a little bit. So I just, I haven't been grocery shopping in a while and I haven't made like a full meal plan um, just with like Christmas and New Year's and all of that stuff going on. Um, so yeah, sitting down today um, to make a meal plan for the week in just a second. I spent the morning cleaning up. I still have to sweep the whole house and the boys are washing their bedding and some of their clothes today so we're kind of just keeping up with laundry. I have a bunch of laundry to fold but I also have a little bit more to wash so I'm not going to fold it until it's all washed and I'm ready to fold it. So today really is just like a laundry day, um, getting the house back in order. Uh, we put boys Lego kits in their rooms, we've organized their closets a little bit, You just all of that stuff from from the craziness of the last couple of weeks. Um, so I thought I would share with you my plans for this week. This is like the first official <laughs> full week of the year. Um, I'm not really sure how 2021 is gonna go. I mean, like, I don't think anything's gonna change tremendously from last year. I hope things improve and get better, but I am not making crazy big plans that I'll need to break or change later. I'm just gonna kind of do quarterly planning. Um, and I'm not a big planner in early January. I don't I don't really set New Year's resolutions. I I mean, like I do have goals each month that I try to do for business or whatever, but I'm just, I don't know. I, I don't really, I don't really set goals just because it's the new year, if that makes sense. It's like, um, I would normally just plan my January like I would any other month of the year. Um, so anyway, because it's the first um, official week in January. This is the time where I typically am doing my homeschool planning for this next year. We start school back in February and we'll go all the way through October. That's how we do our school year. Um, so I already have that little, like a little homeschool rhythm that I have, but we are switching up the subjects that we're studying. So like in science, we'll be studying different types of science. We are moving from medieval history, which was last year into like Renaissance uh, period. Um, and Reformation and things like that. So I have to order books for the boys, reading books. Um, I have to order like math books and spelling books for some of the kids. Um, so I'm making my little homeschool plan. I think this year, one of the things I'm gonna do differently, and I think I'm gonna write this up in a blog post because some people are curious about how we homeschool seasonally and just how, how we do it. I feel like every homeschool parent is different. Um, so it can sometimes be helpful to see how other people do things. And sometimes I think you just have to, if you are a homeschool parent, I think you just kind of have to get in there and do it and figure out what it looks like for yourself. But it can be helpful to get ideas from other people. Um, so I think I'm gonna do it a blog post where I'm a little bit more specific about the changes that we're making. We're really not changing a whole lot. I mean, we, we do have a pretty regular rhythm already. Um, I am trying to do less of a schedule this year, which when I say schedule, I don't mean like, every single day and there are time slots that we do certain things like that's not what I mean I just mean like it's more of like a rhythm like the boys are gonna do certain independent work here we're gonna break for lunch here we're gonna do a nature walk here then we're gonna do group work here and that's basically our rhythm <laughs> for our life in general um, especially on the months where we're homeschooling but I will do a blog post where I'm a little bit more specific about the things we're doing. Um, one of the big things that I'm gonna do differently this year is make a checklist for the boys each day so that I don't have to stay on top of them, but they've got a little list that they can use if they want. And if they're not, if they don't really care about the list because they can keep it all in their head, that's great. They don't have to use it, but I think it'll be easy for them to say, I did my math, check that off. I did my spelling, check that off. I did my grammar today if it's on, if it's a day for grammar, you know what I mean? So like, I just wanna have something where they can be a little bit more in charge of what they're doing and when they do it. 
um, a little bit more independent. Obviously, Ezra and Uriah, my younger two, I will have to work a little bit more with. Um, I hear the boys in there with Charlie being loud. Um, so yeah, I've got to get that done this week. I also have to take this chart. I don't know if you guys can see this. This is um, a personal property inventory. So things that were damaged in the water leak in our garage. We, again, had a bunch of things in storage boxes. And so a lot of stuff got damaged. I mean, I guess not as much as could have. Uh, really, on one side of the garage, things stayed dry. And on the other side, things got wet. But I do have a lot of school books on there, lots of movies. Um, both my and Dean's guitars were out there. So the guitars and the cases. Um, Dean had a lithium battery just soaking, like one of his DeWalt lithium batteries, just soaking in a bunch of water. So that, board games, um, all of my, uh, my gift wrap bag, that whole thing was soaked. Um, anyway, so I have to, I've got the list of things that were damaged. I just have to look everything up to um, put replacement costs on this paper. And as soon as we send that to our insurance company, they'll write us a check because they've already said, this is how much you're getting for the damage in the garage, um, which I think was $8,000. We have a $1,000 deductible. So that part will be 7,000 that we'll get, but then we'll, it'll also add in whatever the damages come to, um, to replace all of this stuff. We'll add into that. So we should have a good bit of money to fix the garage. I'm not sure. I mean, I have these grand ideas of this like study kind of room, but I'm not sure how much we will actually do right now. Again, we weren't really planning on doing this right away. It's kind of become one of those things we have to do right away. Um, and there's so many things about the exterior of the house that we're going to do later on, remodel later on. So it's like, Part of me wants to change the garage door and I want carriage style garage doors that open out and I want them to be wooden because I want all of the doors in the house replaced to be wooden. But part of me is like, don't do the garage doors yet because I know we're not doing the other three doors on the exterior of our house yet. And I want them all to match. Like I want them all to be the same. So maybe I should do them all at the same time. So I'm like, I have all these thoughts running through my head. So I'm really not sure right now what we're going to do. I've pinned a ton of pictures that I like as far as the style of a study slash office kind of space. Um, and again, it may be like other things in the house. We just kind of like improve as we go. We've only been here a year. I feel like we've made a ton of improvements in a year. We have a lot of things to do this next year. I just don't know if that space will be fully decked out as a study. But anyway, this is only week one, so I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. And again, I'm not gonna make these grand and mighty plans that may change. Um, I am going to fill that out today so Dean can get that to the insurance company and we can get our check and just start buying stuff to fix uh, what has to be fixed right away and make this meal plan. Um, let's see, I am working on getting my Herb Folk program, which is like a monthly herb study. So like each month you'll take one herb and you'll learn four things about it and you'll make four little hands-on projects that help you put that action that you learned, like what the herb does, that use into practice in your own life. So these um, studies, I have six of them. One of them's free, so I actually have seven. And um, they are in email format right now, like an email course, which I love, but it's um, I'm moving it over to Teachable to make it easier for people to pick and choose the studies that they want. And the more you buy, the more of a discount you get on them. Um, so I've got to get the last two or three um, uploaded into Teachable and get that all set up and ready to sell that way. Um, I still have some people going through like all six of the studies in email format. Um, but just going to Teachable, again, people can pick and choose if they don't want to do all six of them right away and they want to bundle three of them, they can do that and save a little bit of money. So got to get that finished this week. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Just garage stuff, school planning, finishing up the Herb Vogue stuff this week, getting the house clean. Dean and I are going to Biltmore on Saturday, so I'm going to do a whole separate video on that. I'll probably wrap up this weekly vlog on Friday. And then um, Saturday, we're going to Asheville just for the day. We're not spending the night down there or anything like that. And we're actually doing the candlelight Christmas um, thing at Biltmore. We have never done that. We've gone to Biltmore at Christmas, and you go through the house, and it's all decked out with its Christmas stuff. But at night, they turn all the lights off. All the fireplaces are lit. There are candles everywhere. Um, it's supposed to be more magical than going during the day. I don't know. Never been, so we'll see. Um... This is probably the last time Dean and I will go down. Um, my girlfriends and I usually go 
in the spring months. So somewhere January, February, March. March is really the only spring month. But we usually go in March. I think maybe we'll go earlier this year. I'm not sure. Um, and then I'm not sure what we'll do. I'm not sure if we're going to buy season passes again for next year. COVID just kind of like made it much more difficult to go down there. Like this Saturday we're going. You cannot even make reservations at any of the restaurants to eat there unless you're staying on Biltmore Grounds, which we aren't. So it's like we're going to be there during the day and we want to eat there. And we want to like, we don't want to have to leave. We want to experience all of the stuff that we can at Biltmore, but we're not guaranteed to get into any of the restaurants. We have to stop and see if they've got an opening. And then if they don't, we have to leave, I guess, and go eat somewhere and then come back. And it's a little bit of a hassle, but you know, I understand them wanting to prioritize people who are staying on site. Um, but again, it's just COVID stuff. It just is a bummer. But anyway, it is what it is. I don't know if we'll buy season passes again next year because again, I don't know what 2021 is going to hold. Um, as far as changes, I don't know what's going to happen here in America as far as like lockdowns and quarantines again. And we just really don't know. Um, so anyway, that's my plan for the week. I have been chatting way long on here for a Monday. I'm sure I'll just show you little bits of pieces throughout the week of other things we're doing. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys are having a good Monday. I'm going to get to all of the stuff that I need to finish up doing today and head to the grocery store later. Yeah. So anyway, talk to you tomorrow. Hey guys, it is Wednesday and I did not check in with you all yesterday. Yesterday we stayed at home all day. Um, I got a good bit of work stuff done. Um, yeah, yeah. Yesterday was just like a normal day. There wasn't really much to share. Um, today, same thing. Very typical Wednesday. Um, I got up this morning, got some work done in the morning, got the boys through their, you know, winter break school work. Um, Oh, I did do something yesterday I'll tell you guys about. Um, they got their chores done. I got lunch ready. It's lunch right now. Dean's at home with the boys. They're having lunch. I'm eating lunch on the go. I'm eating some, like, curry chicken and cauliflower stuff um, that the boys did not love, but I think it's good. Um, so I'm eating that leftovers, trying to get that gone um, while they're having soup and some other stuff. Anyway, I'm headed into town to pick up some groceries for the week. I'm a little behind getting my groceries this week, but that's okay. Um, let me think what else we're doing today. We have C students tonight. So today is a very typical Wednesday. Um, yesterday though, I did hop on the phone with, um, I'm trying to think what his title is. He's over our homeschool umbrella or umbrella school, homeschool, <laughs> umbrella school. Um, because I'm thinking about holding, I'm thinking about not holding my kids back. I guess it is kind of holding them back. Repeating their grade for this year again next year. And let me tell you why. Um, when I first started homeschooling, my sister-in-law and I, we all started our kids a year ahead. So my kid was starting, how did this work? I can't remember. They're basically, they started kindergarten a year early. They started first grade a year early, like ahead of their age. Um, yeah, so instead of, I think, starting kindergarten at five, they started at four. And they did fine, and they've done fine all the way through. This year, you know, they, they've done great. They always get good grades. I feel like they're understanding the material. They're progressing through it. Um, yeah, so all is well there. The only thing is, for me, um, they will, you know, finish out this school year, and then next year when I register them, like Jude is in eighth grade this year. So next year when I register him, it'll say eighth grade repeated. And each of the boys, whatever their grade is, um, sixth grade, fourth grade, second grade repeated. And what that will do is it'll put them back in their age group. So this will help me in a few different ways. Um, it kind of gets them all back on track as far as um, the way we rotate our subjects with classical homeschooling. Um, there's trying to think how to word it but it would not be confusing there are four history cycles you go through and then you repeat those again and then you repeat them again and somehow before I got into this style of classical homeschooling we somehow got off somehow I'm not actually I don't even know but the the like by the time Judah is in 12th grade he will be in renaissance history again when he should be in modern history 
and have the full cycle repeated so he'll miss one year but if I hold him back a year he will get that one year he'll get that extra and he'll go through all the cycles three times like he should have um, and then we've had a little bit of issues with like co-op or church functions or like whatever where you have to register your kid they want to know what grade they're in so my kids are typically in with other groups of kids who are just a little bit older than them sometimes this doesn't matter sometimes it makes more of a difference so if I hold them back again or let them repeat this grade again it puts them back in their age bracket again it's not always a big deal for that um, I guess sometimes like I said sometimes it can be um, and then lastly it works with the way we homeschool better um, where we homeschool like spring summer and fall it will help us to be ahead of when they're actually registered in school. I don't know if that makes sense or not because in school they are registered for a fall and spring semester but see we don't do our schooling until spring summer fall so I feel like we're always a little like off and I have to think about it a lot and it's confusing and now that Jude is getting ready to go into high school level classes where he's gonna be getting credits it's gonna make it a little bit more complicated so I would prefer for us to be homeschooling um, our homeschool year to be ahead of what the I guess the grading year is or the registration year in school on paper it would just help things a lot like nothing that's really a big deal I mean we could continue doing what we're doing and it would be fine but I would really rather have that extra year built in if I need it um, like I said be ahead of the grading report thing that I have to do and have my kids whenever it matters to be with people their own age, I guess. Anyway, so I was just talking all this stuff over with the guy who's over at Umbrella School, um, him telling me some things to consider and think about, and then me kind of sharing where I'm coming from. Um, and so that gave me some things, it was really helpful. It gave me some things to think about. And um, to, I talked to, I talked to Dean about it, and we both feel that it would be a lot easier on me if we did just repeat this year's grade. Sorry about that, my camera cut off, or my phone cut off. Um, anyway, so like I was saying, I'm still thinking about this. I don't have to submit final grades and re-register the boys for the next school year until June. So we will start our school year in February like we would. It will be considered their eighth grade year. Um, I really should just like lay this out on paper and explain this because I feel like every time I talk about it, it's confusing. It's confusing to me, but if I hold them back or if I repeat the grades they're in um, this year, then it will work out and it won't be weird on paper and it won't be weird when I say it in my mind. It will work out and the way that we're doing it, um, so we will actually, like by the time Judah's in 12th grade, he will be done with all of his 12th grade work in December, but he won't graduate officially until May. So that'll give him a whole semester to work and get some sort of like life experience kind of thing. I'm sure he'll get a job before that anyway, um, but he won't have to split his time between schoolwork and a job that semester. He'll be able to work full time that semester. And I think that that's really good for him to have before he goes off into college, unless he's 100 percent sure well no he still can't go to college early anyway because he won't have his diploma until like may or june or whenever whenever they get the diploma sent out um so anyway i do think that that's good he'll and he could still graduate high school early if he wanted um he can take summer classes if it's a big deal to him and he really wants to be done early um he can take summer classes and he could be done his junior year he could have all of his credits in i am not real big on pushing the boys to graduate early just because they're homeschooled i really want them to enjoy their youth because they're going to have a lot of years to work and a lot of years to do school if they want to do school um, i don't want to rush them and push them through i feel like i was rushed and pushed through i was expected to do you know xyz and i I don't know I don't do I don't use my degree now you know which I'm glad that I have it but and I'm not saying that everybody's that way I just don't feel like I want to push the boys um, through school anyway I am here to get groceries come on seatbelt work <laughs> um, so I'm gonna let them bring my groceries out and then I'm gonna head home
Hope you guys are having a good Wednesday. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey guys, it's Thursday evening and I am out of town today. I'm looking for some shoes for the boys and a couple other little bits and pieces of things. Um, Dean is taking the boys out to eat somewhere tonight and I don't know what else they're doing. But I am just down in an unnamed location <laughs> um, doing a little shopping. So the boys, I tell you guys, they are so rough on their shoes. It's not even funny. So usually at the beginning of every summer, Dean and I go, I want to buy all of them new tennis shoes. And it's only been like six or seven months, maybe eight since we did that. And three of the four boys shoes are ruined. So now I don't know if it's just because the shoes are junky, which they were good name brand shoes like Nike and um, I think one pair of Skechers and we've never had any Skechers tear up the way these did. And I'm trying to think what Judah got, what his brand was. Anyway, I don't know, but like decent brand shoes, but like the soles are falling off. Um, one of the shoes had like a Velcro closure and it just stopped staying shut, like stopped working. Um, yeah, so like things like that. So now I have to go buy some more shoes. And Ezra's shoes are not too bad, um, but I'm gonna buy him a pair anyway. So that way his shoes that he's currently wearing can become play shoes and then he'll have a new pair of shoes like his bros. Um, so yes, that's what I'm doing tonight. Going to look for kids shoes. I'm also gonna stop at TJ Maxx and Ross probably. And just look around and see what good stuff they've got there. <laughs> I like to go shopping at TJ Maxx and Ross when I'm out of town. Um, probably going to eat out somewhere, but I don't know where. I do need to go to Sam's Club and buy some drinks for C students. I usually order their snacks online at Amazon. Um, or I'll order them from Sam's Club and have them shipped to my house. But they will not ship like sodas or any canned drinks. Um, we buy LaCroix and things like that as well, just so there's a good mixture of things for all the kids. But they won't ship that stuff because it's too heavy. I also need to get like cat litter and cat food and they won't ship that either. So that's something else I could do while I'm down. I still have not found a coat. I really need to find a coat. Hmm. The last time I was down looking for coats, I went to TJ Maxx and Ross and I went to um, Kohl's and, I, and when I went to Penny's or was it Belk's? Did I go to Penny's also? I can't remember, but I didn't, I didn't really find anything that I liked that much. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to find anything tonight or not. Um, but that's what I'm up to today on this Thursday. I got all of my herb foot stuff done at work, which feels so good to have that done. Um, tomorrow is Friday, and I'm going to work on a newsletter that's going out and maybe a blog post. And then I have to get ready for Saturday because Dean and I, like I said in um, earlier this week, Dean and I are going to Biltmore on Saturday. So I have to kind of get all of that stuff kind of ready to go. We're not staying overnight, so that'll make it a little bit easier, but I do I do need to figure out some other stuff. Get things ready for my sister-in-law to watch the boys. So tomorrow will be a busy day as well. Um, yeah. So back to the kids' shoe thing. I guess what I was asking is, if you have kids, especially boys, I don't know if girls are as rough on their shoes as boys are. I would love to know. I don't have girls, so I don't really know. I don't remember being so rough on my shoes, but I also don't remember being their age and taking care of clothes either. I don't know. I don't remember really caring about clothes until I was probably in middle school. Um, but my boys are rough on shoes. Now we do try to teach them to be better um, with their clothes, like not not treat them badly. Sorry, my hands in the way of the camera because I'm trying to turn in here. Um, to, you know, have some responsibility, take care of their clothes. Um, but you know, my oldest is 12, my youngest is six. They just don't care. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'm at the shoe store. I'm gonna run in here and see if they have any good deals on shoes. A lot of times, this particular store, which I don't see any signs, a lot of times they'll have like a buy one, get one half off sale, which is awesome, because that ends up 
saving us, you know, like it's almost like a free pair of shoes. So that's great. Um, and if they don't, I'm just going to have to buy them anyway because I need shoes. They need shoes. Anyway, hope you guys are having a good Thursday. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Hey guys, it's Friday and the boys are taking their tech time early today because they got their schoolwork and their chores done early. Dean um, and his brother have switched shifts at work today. So instead of Dean working first shift and his brother working second, his brother's working first and he's working second. So he has the beginning of the day off to get a lot of things done that he normally doesn't have time to get done after work. Um, because most businesses close around five. So anyway, he took the dehumidifier back to the rental store. We've had that thing running for at least a week in the garage and we think it's dry at this point. Um, we will probably do a couple little things to make sure that the insulation inside of the walls is dry. Somebody told us that you can drill holes at the bottom and they have these machines that um, have like these little inserts that go into those holes and it kind of blows air up each of the like in between the two by fours like in each little section to make sure that that insulation is dry so we may do that later on down the road I'm not sure but the week of having the dehumidifier in there we feel like has done its job and it's as good as it's gonna get for now um, and he also took our paper where we took inventory of all of our personal belongings that were destroyed in the flood and um he took that and so we should get a check soon from our insurance company and then we'll be able to start working on that room i got some packages throughout the week and i wanted to show you guys what i got um uh, a lot of this stuff is school related and then we also got our little l brackets for the the, um, the shelves that are gonna go on each side of the fireplace. My brain is not working today, I can't think of stuff. And then I also got a bunch of dresses that I ordered from Amazon for Valentine's Day for my and Dean's traditional Cafe Lola in Johnson City, Tennessee, Valentine's Day dinner. We always go, they always have a really big, like um, they pair your food with different wines and it's a big thing. And this year we have a, two other friend couples coming along with us, so it should be a lot of fun really looking forward to that anyway so I wanted to get a special dress just for that and so I found three on Amazon that I thought I would like and I am gonna try them on and if I don't like them I'll send them back but the one or maybe two if I do like I'll keep okay so first let me share these L brackets that I ordered so as I've mentioned before and in other videos is this one that I opened um, our fireplace is rock we have our wood burning stove in there and then we will have three walnut shelves on each side of the fireplace and they'll have these antique L brackets underneath of them and the very bottom will probably store wood but I'll just put like books and decor pieces on these shelves if I can get this open it's like really tight anyway so I wanted I wanted the L brackets to be decorative so that they looked nice. And these are cast iron, antique brass L brackets. Can you see that? Aren't they pretty? And they have that little scroll pattern, so it's very Englishy looking. Um, yeah, so the long piece goes on the underneath side of the shelf, and then this piece goes against the wall. So yeah, they'll There'll be two for each shelf. So I have about six boxes. Um, they weren't, they came in a pack of two. So each box was a pack of two. And I honestly cannot remember how much they were because this company had different colors, like different styles. You could get just like a really rustic black. You could get um, silver or brushed nickel type colors, chrome. Um, they had like a like an antique bronze, this antique brass. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think what all they had. They had a bunch of different ones and they were all different prices depending on which finish you got on them. They had really good reviews. So we are going to try these, make sure that they work for our shelves. And if they don't, we'll send them back. But anyway, I love them. I'm really happy with them. So I can't wait to see them up. We have the wood over in the shop and Dean has to plain everything to make it smooth. They're two inch thick walnut slabs. They have to be planed down. They'll be about an inch and a half thick, he said. Um, really nice and smooth. 
we, I'm trying to decide if I want to polyurethane them and seal them. In our old house, we didn't polyurethane anything because I wanted everything kind of raw and rustic. And I still really like that look. Our countertop in our kitchen is not polyed. Um, it's just, I oil it. So I do like that, but I just don't really love the shiny finish on things all that much. Anyway, we'll see. We may poly them just to help with like dust and cleaning and whatnot and maybe like a, some sort of matte kind of poly, not anything real shiny and glossy. Anyway, then he'll cut those to length. We'll poly them then and then we'll put them up. So hopefully that'll be done. Um, as far as school books go, I typically order used books on Amazon because I don't like buying brand new books when there are used books out there and available. So I will go on thrift books and I'll order school books and I will look at the used books on Amazon. Now, if they don't have used and I have to order them new, then I have to order them new because there are no used ones. So these are just, I think these are just some books that the boys will be reading in school this year. Some of these are grade specific. We're well, not really grade specific, I should say. We, we kind of follow the classical homeschool style where they're in like stages. So you have grammar, dialect, and rhetoric. <laughs> So mine are in the bottom two right now. But um, we've got some geography books. We have history books. We have science books. Um, I'm trying to think what else I bought. Let's see if I can get this one open. Some civics and logic style books. This is science, a science book that the boys will be reading this year. Um, I'm still in the planning stages of homeschooling. January is like my planning month because we start school in February, so I'm like buying a ton of books. All of these are like their science books that they're gonna be reading. These right here. Um, and this one is probably, this is a story of Denmark. So we're doing some world geography. And this will, these will be our read alouds this year. I may read aloud Harry Potter, I'm not really sure. I've So far I've had the boys reading those on their own. Um, oh, this book is, this box is stuck. So I don't know that I want to read it aloud to them because I think it's part of the fun of that series is them reading it and experiencing it for themselves. Gosh, I can't get this box open. Um, so I thought I would just do our geography book as a read aloud this year, cut down on the amount that they have to read as far as school stuff goes. And that way they have their history and science books that they're reading every single day. And then Judah has like civics, or like economics really, and some logic style books that he reads in addition to what his brothers read because they're not in those, they're not in those classes yet. Um, and then I could read the geography books aloud. I love our geography stories. I really like going through the different countries or the different states if we're doing U.S. geography, um, which we're supposed to be doing U.S. geography this year, but I think I'm gonna do another year of world. I'm not sure, I don't know yet. I'm still planning. Um, okay, so. Most of these books, a lot of the books that I have for science and history, I already had. So the littler guys will be reading the books that we already had that their bigger brothers read the last time we did this. So I'm ordering some new books for the bigger boys. You can never have too many books. Anyway, um, this stuff that I have here is from the company Demi Learning. This is Matthew C. and Spelling UC. These are products that I have used forever since I started homeschooling with my kids. Um, I have all of the DVDs where the teacher teaches and the instruction manuals, and I just have to order the student books and their test booklets. There's a student book here and a test book book. In each level, I have to order this every single year. So these are consumable. They are not reusable unless I wanted to make copies of them for each of my kids, which I don't because that's a whole lot of work, and I don't want to do that much work for this. So, this is math next year. Um, we have different levels, beta, delta, zeta, and algebra one for Judah, lucky him. And then these are our spelling workbooks. Now, Judah is out of spelling. He's gone through all of these. He's a fairly good speller, so he doesn't have like a spelling workbook. He will still do copy work and he'll still do dictation. That is a part of his language arts, literature, stuff that he does. We just normally never do those parts of his of the language arts program that we use because I love spelling UC. And again, I have to buy these new every single year, but it is worth it to me to buy the money because I have seen 
how well Judah and Isaiah, my older two, have done with it. So it's, it's worth sticking with this. And now we'll see how Judah does now that he's done with this program as far as just doing copy work and the dictation where he's studying something that he's read and then dict I'll dictate that to him and he'll write it out. We'll see how he does with that. I know a lot of homeschool moms just use, you know, copy work from books that their kids are reading and the dictation that way, but I really liked, liked the spelling you see programs have always done that. So this is um, Ezra's. He will be in second grade and then Uriah's fourth grade and this is Isaiah and he's in sixth grade. So the thing that I like about these two is that each year they're studying a different topic, like Ezra studying kind of like nursery rhymes, so Jack and Jill, and then Uriah will be studying things about America, and ancient achievements are for Isaiah in sixth grade, um, and so it's like stories of famous people or events, and they copy that story over and over and over throughout the week, and then they do a day or two of dictation. It just depends on what grade they're in or what level they're on, I should say. I still say grade sometimes um, because, you know, in public school, you're in a grade, but when you homeschool, it's more like you just progress through the levels and stages. Um, I guess some homeschool moms do really specific grade stuff. I say grades just to kind of keep things orderly in my head because that's what I'm used to, but we don't really stick with grade levels as much as some people do. So anyway, those are all the homeschool books that have come in. There are several others. I told Dean I was like, expect to get a ton of shipments, like a ton of little packages in the mail because I had just ordered all of our homeschool stuff for the year. And I do think I have finished. I've got everything. The only thing that I didn't buy that I, I bought last year, but I didn't buy this year, were their language arts workbooks. Um, I tried buying physical copies of them last year. In previous years, we, we use um, a language arts program called Language Arts or English Lessons Through Literature. That's what it is, English Lessons Through Literature. I love it. Um, it has a lot of different things all compiled into one. So I think it's, you're getting like a lot of bang for your buck if you are like a classical slash Charlotte Mason style homeschooler. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I love, uh, it's from a company um, called Barefoot Ragamuffin and I love all their products. I use a ton of their stuff. It's really great. Um, anyway, so their, their textbooks are PDF textbooks. They're on their little school tablets so they can read their lesson on their own. Their art studies are built into this program so they can see a full color picture. It's already in the book. Their poetry is already in their books. So they have all their folk tales are already in that book. So a lot of the things that we would normally do, I don't have to go look for it because it's already in this PDF and it's like on their tablets or like Judah will put it on his laptop for this year, I'm sure. Um, so I love that and what I used to do is I would just take a piece of paper and I'd write their sample sentences on there that they would, um, that they, um, what's the word? Diagram, I'm like dialect, I'm like got all my words mixed up, but they diagram these sentences based on the lesson and whatever it is that they're learning. But then that was a lot of work for me because now I have like four of them and I'm like having to write all these sample sentences out in a regular notebook. So last year I bought the consumable workbook but then we really didn't even use the full workbook because like I said, we do our spelling with spelling you see. So half of the workbook we didn't use and half of it we did use just for diagramming. So this year I thought, instead of spending the money <clears throat> buying those workbooks every single year, I'm just gonna buy the workbooks as a PDF and I'll go and pull those up on the computer and I'll just print off the pages that have their diagramming exercises. And then I'll hole punch all that and put it in a little notebook for each of them and that way I can use that over and over and over. We have like an Epson um, uh, Eco Tank. I think that's our printer. So it's supposed to save us a little bit of money um, when we're printing all of these papers and stuff. And the ink is lasting uh, much longer than my other printers that I have before. So that's my plan. I think I have all of our school books ordered. I'll continue getting packages in the mail for all of these little reading books. Um, but our math spelling and our grammar type things are taken care of. And then the rest of this is just history, geography, and science. Um, we already have a lot of stuff that we reuse for the other subjects that we do. So anyway, um, I'm gonna clean up all the books and try to get those things organized, put all of this stuff away, try my dresses on, and get to a little bit more work before Dean gets home. I think the boys are done with their tablet time because I hear them running around, so I better get to them and 
get them busy doing something else. So anyway, um, I hope you guys are having a nice Friday. We woke up to a beautiful snow everywhere. It's supposed to snow all day today, so it'll be nice. Anyway, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.